Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again with another attempt at Energy Blade. Um, I hate this thing, but uh, we're making it kind of work. So Energy Blade, this is my third attempt and uh, you know, all of them have been kind of half-hearted or they've, they've gotten my full attention and heart, but they've all become like half builds in my opinion. Uh, because the scaling of the thing itself is just so ass backwards. So basically you are supposed to get a bunch of energy shield and then cut half of it off um, with a buff and then you gain that much of your energy shields value to your weapon. And uh, it will turn your weapon into a pure stat stick for a bit of lightning damage. In my case it's something like 50 to 2000 lightning damage and I've gone full sort of meme with my build and use the battle mage ascendancy from inquisitor to then attach all of that lightning to a spell and the spell of choice is dark pact and the delivery of choice is totems it's a build and concept i was thinking about like last league but i just couldn't really justify without an extra ascendancy point and now that you can get those and we have five ascendancies on this uh, guy at the moment i thought it could be um, kind of a build. And it is kind of a build. It just like I said, I'm really not a big fan of how Energy Blade makes you feel when you're building because you're putting all this work into just pure energy and then you're trying to come up with this sort of scuffed half life, half energy thing and then you cut your energy in half and then it still doesn't seem that worth it ultimately. Uh, but either way, the idea was for Dark Pack Totems. Um, Dark Pack Totems was a build I played a couple years ago that was really good, but it got nerfed thanks to Forbidden Right Totems, so it can't scale off of um, Totem Life anymore, and now we're just using flat spell additional damage, uh, and they just basically have a shitload of extra lightning damage and a bunch of extra damage because they are using their own life as a cast. <coughs> so... It does seem to be working out pretty well, like I think it's capable of taking on all the end game and stuff. I had to put a bit of work into um, figuring out the reservations and all that. So as you can see, I'm kind of like low life, petrified blood, um, and still a bunch of life and energy regen. And I would have also liked to be Eldritch Battery or Corrupted Soul, but can't really justify those with the amount of life total I would then have. Um, and how susceptible I would be to chaos damage. I'm already fairly susceptible to chaos damage at the moment, but it's not a big issue for the most part, and uh, it might just get me killed if I go uh, any deeper down the rabbit hole of reservations. Um, but at the moment, I think it's a few million DPS. I've only really tested a couple little boss fights and all that, and the playstyle just is another totem build, which isn't really for me, but I don't mind totem builds too much. Uh, and my fallback plan for this character, if the Dark Pack stops doing too much goodness, is just to try and pivot into Ice Spear and see how Ice Spear totems, still with the Battle Mage Energy Blade um, build style, see how the Ice Spear totems then handle themselves. Because I think Ice Spear totems is still probably one of the better totems out there at the moment. But Dark Pact, its um, main benefits here are with the... Um, astral projector ring you can just pump your dark packs as novas wherever they want to go and it's a very instant attack so it will just blast a target from range instantly whereas something like ice spear does have travel time uh, and it seems to be okay on mana as well it's one of the cheaper spells out there because there's a life cost commonly associated with it too uh, so I can actually, for the first time in a while, use my mana bar as it was supposed to be used for like spells and just get a little bit of regen and then sustain off a of mana that way. So that's pretty good. Whereas Ice Spear Titans are something like twice as much on the cost and it's pretty tough to be pure mana off of that. So we'll see how that pans out. But so far you can see that against some of these um, tier 16 bosses and stuff, it is possible to be doing good damage and I'll test out some more of the end game soon. Um, basically though, I wouldn't really recommend copying something like this, uh, at least not on the dark packed front, maybe on the ice spear front, but um, even then, just a normal ice spear totems is probably gonna yield better results. 
because I'll show you what the character looks like in a sec and I feel like I've put a fair bit of work into its gear and the results aren't as impressive as I would hope given how um, polished the gear is in certain areas especially for energy blade like I had to make most of my gear myself um, because I figured I needed this level of hybrid gear that also achieves some level of damage and uh, that's what energy blade needs um, I've yet to look at anyone else's energy blade things and I think there's a couple of successful variants out there um, so Fuck, maybe it's just time to throw in a talent and you blade all together. In any case, let me show you how I've built the character. Here we are with my character, level 90 Inquisitor called Battery Powered DP. Um, basically, just DP, Dark Pact, obviously, Battery Powered Energy Blade. Nothing sinister otherwise, yep. Uh, so, our Energy Blade is the basis of the build and. Um, like I said, basically you stack energy shield and then cut half of your energy shield off for a buff that just gives you a weapon. Uh, this weapon cannot be modified in any way and what you have before it, like your current weapon before that, makes no difference. I'm just wearing Axiom and only thing that carries over is your sockets. So there it is and it does this. Um, with this and Battle Mage, so Battle Mage, the Inquisitor Ascendancy, it puts all of this lightning damage onto a spell. So then you have that much um, lightning spell sort of interaction. And I'm using the Battle Mage um, Ascendancy Jewels. Uh, they weren't too expensive when I bought them like a week or two ago, and I knew I'd use them eventually. So I got both of these at the moment and started using them at like level 20. You can see that my Dark Pact has a little bit of Chaos Damage, a bunch of Lightning. If I turn off Battle Mage, pretty much no Lightning uh, whatsoever. Um, I mean, Energy Blade. If I turn Energy Blade back on, all of my DPS comes back. So we are hardly caring about the Chaos portion of the skill here, and it's just pure Lightning. Um... It's only got 100 damage effectiveness, so all of the lightning that gets on there is just one for one, but then there's also 130 more damage uh, if you're using your life, and I do believe that should apply to the totems as your, so they are using my life that way. Um, and we could also try uh, just summoning a bunch of skeletons and shit, but um, with addition of chains, yet to test that out or um, have a setup for that, see if it's worth doing. In any case, that's what we're currently at, and that's how it's uh, playing out. With Dark Pact, it's got a pretty low base mana cost, so like I said, it can actually um, use just my mana to summon totems. Uh, currently, the build has five totems, and I do think an Inquisitor um, totem base isn't too bad at this point. Like, if you really want, you could take... Uh, just one of the Herophant, like additional totem ascendancy nodes. It's pretty cheap. Or um, you can go the Her uh, Herophant and steal Inevitable Judgment or a Battle Mage or some shit. I think totem builds are in a decent enough place at the moment, but it's whether or not you can enjoy the playstyle if you pick the right totem to play with. Uh, so currently my links here are Dark Pact, Spell Totem, Multi Totem, um, Crit Strikes, Crit Damage, and Increased Area. It's the only source of increased area I have at the moment. Uh, I did have a little bit more on the tree, but it doesn't matter enough. So just the 50 here is pretty important, though. Um, without area, the clear feels terrible because you really want your totems, uh, your dark pack to basically be hitting one pack throughout its entire pack every hit, as opposed to, like, several hits per pack. Um, so, yeah, you need some area in the build and then a Sorpin Conk effect for single target. Uh, that's what it's currently at, and levels on this don't matter too much, but it does give you more damage with hits and ailments um, when using your life, so it still scales up a bit. And then um, the rest of the gear is basically just tailor-made to do lots of energy shield. Uh, we've got the Astral Projector, of course, that's what lets us be more of a ranged Nova type thing. So the chest I got is, um, it just had two mods on it, basically, that I cared about, which is double T1 energy shield. Uh, it had an additional mod, which was, I think, mana, uh, if you, you know, try and give yourself the best odds. So I bought this thing for like 20c and then um, had a Exarch influence on it and used an Anul, um, an Eldritch Anul. So it's a one in three, removed the thing I wanted to remove and then just crafted the life as energy shield and then filled up the stats with um, Eater of Worlds and Eldritch Anuls that way. 
So got a bit of regen and just some res, but for the most part, all we're looking for here is energy shield, uh, double energy energy shield rolls and life as max energy shield. Uh, then got a dark packed enchant hat and um, you know turned it into a hybrid hat with I don't remember maybe it was essences life essences I think and then a couple of hybrid rolls there. Um, grabbed a fractured amulet and just used deafening scorns until something decent happened. All I was really looking for was either life or a percent energy shield roll, and that's what we got there. Uh, started out with the three prefixes as a shield. Um, just bought it for like ADC or something, and then uh, did prefix cannot be changed, and Ash uh, Veiled reroll, Veiled Orb reroll, and happened to hit the double damage focus, and then slammed it one time and got all res but the important stuff is max totem and hopefully a bit of damage the shield isn't going to provide that much energy shield either way but um yeah that's what we're looking for and i do love me some double damage focus so it goes up to 20 percent it's pretty damn hefty and then combine that with the gloves that have 50 percent car speed while focused our focus button becomes pretty big these gloves are just pure hybrid i bought them as the three prefix hybrid for 1x something like that 100c maybe uh, and then once again prefix cannot be changed used a veiled orb and happened to hit an accuracy roll but then also the double damage focus uh car speed focus and then just you know finish it off with some unnerve and some hinder um and then boots once again just crafted this with um essences i think a few life essences trying to get a hybrid roll and this is where we're at and then the belt uh, is strength roll is particularly good for us because it gives me extra crit. So that's 60 crit right there as an inquisitor. Otherwise, all we were looking for was the percent energy shield roll on a crystal. So it put a uh, you know, crusader onto a crystal and then started rolling it using, um, in this case, at this time, I think I was just cow spamming. Yeah. And that's what ended up leading to this type of roll. Percent energy shield is pretty important for this build um, because you don't get that much on the tree and you have so much flat from a lot of your gear that it's all you're really looking for, a bit of extra percent energy shield. And then um, another ring with a bit of car speed, life, res, strength. And like I said, uh, strength is worth crit. So currently strength gives me an extra 276 crit. Uh, I do have noble judgment and then all the regen and shit over there. Uh, and then the passive tree is kind of just, I don't know, probably basic enough totem tree, but we are also picking up a lot of the hybrid nodes. Um, and got pain attunement or spell damage, bit of extra crit there, totem nodes there, um, extra effective crits and ailments and shit, um, totem crit, um, additional totem reservation, uh, watcher's eye that does both wrath and zeal tree, pretty cheap stuff to get a combo of those, um, but as you may notice I've only got wrath up and then I've got zeal tree attached to divine blessing and life tap, so similar to the eldritch battery method except since my life is protected most of the time just for a temporary 10 second buff I slam this. Uh, and then as you can see, it takes away almost all of my life, gives me 10 seconds zealotry buff, um, and then I regen pretty damn quick uh, the rest of my life anyway. Uh, but it gives us that zealotry buff, and it's pretty important for our damage as well. Um, otherwise, I've also got a totem cluster. Now, I initially thought I was going to grab a lightning cluster, and I looked at it and I thought, hey, knockback on crit would be cool. I think that'd be defensive and all that. It's felt terrible, don't do it. Uh, so many bosses and stuff and mobs that just get knocked away from your totems because I do have lots of hits that go off pretty frequently as opposed to just like crushing something real quick. Uh, it felt bad. I will try and get rid of it, hopefully. Otherwise, a bit of leech, I think that does apply to my totem. So the totems need some sort of sustain since they're dark packed and they're killing themselves. Uh, Vitality brings them up a bit, but so does the Leech. And then just Snowstorm, um, Lightning's extra cold, a little bit of extra damage. Uh, and then the Totem nodes that we went for are, importantly, um, Sleepless Sentries for the Onslaught. 
and then Ancestral Echo, and then also got Ancestral Echo and Arcane Surge. So every time I press Totem, you get guaranteed Arcane Surge and Onslaught, which does feel pretty good. Uh, for the rest of the setup, I've got Blood and Sand, which is divergent for just 20 spell area damage, but I needed something to fill up my life bar for um, low life. So I've got Vitality, Arrogance, Clarity, all of those just attached to the life bar. Um, flame Dash, Energy Blade, Faster Attacks, and Shield Charge. Uh, over here we have Stone Golem. Alright, um, Arcanist Brand and Purifying Flame. So Purifying Flame is purely to get the um, Consecrated Ground on enemies because um, the Totems won't be creating, or the hits from Dark Pact won't be creating Consecrated Ground themselves. Um, we then have... Petrified Blood over here attached to Discipline, or doesn't have to be attached. Discipline, Assassin Mark, which I self curse just on certain mobs. Uh, Wrath, and then that's pretty much it. And the playstyle, as you would expect, totem based, just, you know, place totems in front of yourself and they go off and crush stuff. Like I said, Chaos Res isn't the best and Chaos Damage does kind of hit me a bit hard. I haven't finished doing my Lightning Res yet either. Um, but, you know, it's a work in progress. It's pretty easy to finish off, just need to divine a couple things, and I forgot to bless this ring for some reason. A million different times, so almost done on that lightning res, and then we'll be a little bit tankier. Uh, and flasks, I'm using a quartz for um, cast speed, a diamond for crit and crit, uh, and the mana flask doesn't do too much at the moment, because like I said, I pretty much do sustain mana at the moment, but it helps out just a little bit could still potentially um, replace it in the future for something else that's the build for now um energy blades felt a bit weird and this um i'm not sure how much damage this build is doing yet if it ends up pulling out decent single target and killing stuff then badass um i'll let you know but if not i'll probably try and pivot a little bit to uh ice spear and just see how that feels and maybe it becomes somewhat of a successful build but at the same time i do feel like your ice spear without energy blade is going to be just as good without having to worry about any of the energy blade memes that's it thank you very much for watching and see you next time